Hello, my name is Victoria. Thank you very much for clicking on this video. It's my first video in the section of biology. And today I'm going to talk about the uh, basics of genetics, which you're going to need no matter if you're studying for your A-levels right now or for your university exam. I'm currently a medical student in the fourth year and I hope my video will help you. Uh, it would be nice if you would subscribe for future videos or leave a comment about what you would like to see further in the future. So first of all, I would like to cover some basics about genetics. What is genetics actually? It is a part of biology and it studies how traits, so certain characteristics, are passed on from parents to their offspring. And now I would like to cover some basic terminology, which I'm sure you will sooner or later encounter in your studies. So, Phenotype and genotype are two of the words that are frequently used in genetics. Phenotype is everything that covers appearance, development and behavior. So, for example, when a mom says to her child, oh wow, you're as stubborn as your father, then that's a phenotype, something that's expressed. Or, for example, when someone says, oh, you have the beautiful eyes of your mother, that's again a phenotype. And a genotype is the code that's standing behind that phenotype. We can't necessarily always see it because there can be um, a trait hidden in a genotype which is not expressed in the phenotype. But we will come to that later. But for now a genotype is a genetic code expressing information which is encoded in the DNA or the RNA. Okay, so the next term is a gene. What is a gene? A gene is a sequence of DNA which codes a specific trait. And the allele is a variation of a form of a given gene. gene. So, for example, there is a gene for the eye color and the allele would be for blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes. And then the, the genotype can be either homozygotic or heterozygotic. In homozygotic, it means that two alleles are coding for the same phenotype. So in a genotype that would be expressed as either two capital letters or two small letters, but both are the same. So an individual got two times the same kind of copy of a gene from their parents. In heterozygotic, these two are different. And then there can be either dominant or recessive, but um, it will definitely be different. Then what you also will encounter is the word diploid or haploid. Diploid meaning that there are two sets of chromosomes and diploid cells are the somatic cells. So the cells in the body and not in the gametes because the gamete is a reproductive cell so an egg cell or a sperm cell, and those are haploid, meaning they only have one set of chromosomes. And then when the two gametes come together, they will form a diploid set of chromosomes. So a, a full set, a diploid set is a full set. And uh, what you also will hear and probably often use is the word dominant and recessive. Dominant is when only one copy is needed to express a phenotype which is usually expressed as a capital letter and a small letter or can of course also be two capital letters but usually dominant is what we can see and that's expressed by a capital letter and recessive is only expressed when it's homozygotic so two small a's one small a and a capital a you won't see in the phenotype as so you won't see the recessive one and then there's uh, another form which is Codominance, that is when neither of the two alleles is dominant. So the offspring will express both or a mix of it. For example, in a special form of, of crossbreeding of certain plants, the, uh, it is possible to see that the offspring of a red plant and a white plant will give off pink plants in the next generation. 
Now we will come to the Mendelian laws. Those are also often taught in school or in university. And Mendel was a monk who was studying uh, pea plants and their different characteristic. But that's another topi topic. Maybe I make a video about this also. There are three Mendelian laws, which I will explain now one by one. The first law is the law of dominance. So if the two alleles, which are at one locus, so at one place on the chromosome, if those are different, then one of them must be dominant and the other one must be recessive. The second law is the law of segregation. So in deep fluid organisms, meaning they have two copies of each chromosome and on the chromosomes are the alleles, so they also have always two copies of each allele. Um, those are separated in the gametes and those are passed on individually. So for example, I have a brother with blonde hair. So, and my parents both have brown hair. So this means that my parents must both have the uh, allele for blonde hair, which is recessive in their genotype, even though it's not in their phenotype. And then for my brother, he got both the recessive blonde uh, alleles, and he's phenotypically and genotypically blonde. While I have brown hair, obviously. So I could either have capital letter, capital letter for brown hair, or capital letter, small letter for brown hair. So when I have children, I might see if I have a, hem a homozygotic or heterozygotic brown genotype. Okay, so the third law. The third law is the law of independent assortment. And this means that the genes do not influence how the alleles will be distributed on the gametes. So every possible combination that you can imagine is equally likely to happen. And then uh, the next question is, what are Mendelian traits? So what can we use these laws for? In humans, those are a few traits. I will just give a few examples. So freckles are inherited by the Mendelian law, blood type, hair color, and skin tone. And the Mendelian traits are those that are passed down to the next generation by dominant and recessive ideals of one gene. I made also a visualization of the laws by using crossing schemes. Uh, I will show them to you in a second, but first of all, I wanted to shortly mention a few codes that are used for crossing schemes. So usually the first generation, the parent generation, is marked with a capital P, meaning the parental generation. And when those are uh, crossed with each other, we will got, get their children generation. But we don't call it children. We call it the filial generation. So the first offspring generation. And when those again are crossed, we get the second filial generation, which are then the offspring generation of the F1 generation. And when we cross two individuals, we mark that with a cross, as you can see now in the visualization. And as I mentioned before, capital letters are for dominant alleles, which determine the phenotype, and small letters are used for recessive alleles. Now here in the picture, you can see the visualization, so the crossing schemes of the laws. And in the first one, in the law of dominance, I cross two homozygotic individuals. So in the P generation, in the parental generation, you can see a homozygotic dominant and a homozygotic recessive uh, individual, which are crossed. Then I mark the gametes, and I always mark them with a circle around. So I remember it's a gamete. And then I cross them, the first one with the first one of the other one, the first one with the second one of the other one, and so on. And so I get the F1 generation. And here you can see that if two homozygotic individuals are crossed, then all four of the offspring look the same. And we can see here, they all have one capital and one small letter. 
So they all carry kind of the trait for the recessive phenotype, but they don't express it. They express the trait of the dominant allele. In the second one, the law of segregation, I again made a cross scheme. And here, again, we cross a homozygotic dominant with a homozygotic recessive individual. I marked it again with the p-generation and that I'm crossing them with a cross. Then I wrote down the gametes where I just write every letter uh, individually. I usually make a circle around and mark how I cross them so that I'm sure I don't miss any of them. And then when we further cross now the F1 generation, then we will, this is now the new P generation here, as you can see, then we get a new F1 generation. And here something happened. Here we crossed two heterozygotic individuals and then uh, we get one individual which is completely homozygotic dominant and one who is completely homozygotic recessive. So now we have a three to one ratio of those expressing the dominant, uh, the dominant allele and one who is expressing the recessive uh, alleles. So we have one who's phenotypically and genotypically recessive, the one with the two small letters. Then the other uh, ones, even though the first one and the second and the third one look different because the first one has two capital letters, um, they all look phenotypically the same, but they will differ in their offspring because the first one can only pass on the dominant allele. And now the third law is when uh, we're crossing two individuals that differ in multiple traits homozygotically. Then in the F2 generation, these individual traits will be passed on individually. So they will be combined newly. So to stay with the example of the hair color, um, now we put in a second trait, which might be uh, straight hair or curly hair. So if we have one parent who has blonde and straight hair and the other parent who has brown and curly hair, then in the first generation, the dominant one will be seen. And in the F2 generation, when the F1 generation is crossed with each other, then those traits are combined newly. So we have a new ratio, um, which is frequently portrayed in a Punnett square, uh, which I can explain in the next video. But if you already know what a Punnett square is, you can pause the video here and cross the F1 generation, which is seen how here in the scheme, and then uh, check if your Punnett square was correct. I will blend in the solution in a few seconds. Here in the Punnett square, you can see that we have a ratio of nine to three to three to one. So this means that nine of them will express both dominant traits. Usually um, brown hair is the dominant trait and curly hair is dominant. So when one of the parents has curly hair, then it's usually more likely that the child will have curly hair also. But here we will see that even brown and straight and blonde and curly will occur. Thank you very much for uh, watching my video. I hope you learned something. Feel free to post in the comments and I would be very happy if you would su subscribe our channel. And yeah, see you in the next video.